So the day is finally here, guys. Legends Arceus is now out worldwide, and we're all finally getting our hands into it. However, if you're not as familiar with what the game offers compared to series veterans like myself and many other YouTubers, or you've just been burnt out on Pokemon as of late, there's a good chance you might be holding back from getting this game right away, and are waiting to hear what everyone else thinks about it. Well, if that's the case, then today's video is for you. Today, I give you all everything you need to know about Pokemon Legends Arceus before buying it. Now, I did this for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but that was more straightforward to take care of, as it was basically a one-for-one -one remake, and didn't really require much knowledge on the games directly to be able to write about. Legends Arceus, however, is a much different beast compared to those games. So, I waited specifically for reviews to come out to go over those for the people who are still unsure about things even after watching all of the previews Pokemon has put out. So now that you all know what this video is about and who it's for, I'm going to waste no more time with the intro and just get right into things. So, back in February of 2021, for Pokemon's 25th anniversary, the Pokemon Company announced both Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, as well as Pokemon Legends Arceus. Reception of both of these games were very mixed up first. As on BDSP side of things, many people didn't care for the chibi art style, including myself. But obviously, you guys know that I warmed up to it. And while things look promising for Legends Arceus in terms of shaking up the series, it did seem pretty rough no matter how you looked at it. Animations were being loaded at half the frame rate compared to normal, the aliasing was very rough around the models, especially the trees, and you know how Pokemon fans care about their trees and overall didn't really indicate whether or not there was going to be a lot to do in this game at first glance. So, if that was all you ever saw for Pokemon Legends Arceus, then I wouldn't blame you for being very weary of purchasing this game. Fortunately for you though, several more trailers have been released since then, showing dramatic improvements across the board in terms of animations, graphics, and things actually going on in the overworld. So, what exactly is going on in Legends Arceus then? Well, from everything that we've gathered here, Legends Arceus is a game set in the Sinnoh region of the past, known in the game as Hisui. Your character is a part of the Galaxy Expedition Team, and on the surface, your goal is to explore the region and learn more about the Pokémon that inhabit it. Since it takes place in the past, you're no longer using the technologically advanced Pokédex that we see nowadays. Don't ask about that phone, though. Instead, you're actually having to create one, the first ever Pokédex. This means all the information we've ever seen about Pokémon, like how they like swimming or things like that, those are all from us. Collecting this information comes in the form of actually seeing the Pokémon doing various things out in the world, requiring both patience and cunning from the player. But if you were worried that this was simply just a game having you just catch Pokémon over and over again, with nothing new other than the story and having an open world type environment, then you would be mistaken. You see, there are also brand new Pokémon, as well as regional variants to catch in Hisui. In the trailers, we see the likes of Hisui and Growlithe, and Voltorb, and a handful of others for new forms, with Cleaver, Wordeer, and Basculegion taking center stage as brand new evolutions in this unexplored version of Sinnoh. Heck, we even just recently got the announcement of Hisui and forms for the starter Pokémon. Albeit, they are silhouetted, so we don't know what they fully look like, if you've remained spoiler-free thus far. Now, of course, I don't think any of us are expecting 60 to 70 new Pokémon and forms, but I think we can all expect around double or so of each of those, as that's the direction that marketing has gone. I think the last thing that really needs to be discussed from the trailers here is, of course, the crafting system. This is something that will be unbelievably engaging in this game. Sure, we'll have opportunities to buy different items to help us on our expeditions, but Pokémon has made it very clear that the intention is for us to collect the different items through battles and exploration in order to make them ourselves. So, what? Are we looking at Pokémon Breath of the Wild here? Surely and truly? I guess in some aspects, the answer would be yes. But all previews of the game so far actually imply something closer to Monster Hunter than Zelda. The world, while very open, is not seamlessly open. Jubilife Village acts as a hub world for you to report all your main story progress and side quest missions back to. As you rank up for completing these tasks, you have the ability to access new areas of the region, letting you encounter and control many more varieties of unique and powerful Pokémon. 
so that didn't sell you, and you were waiting out for reviews to drop. Luckily, those are out now. At the time of writing this, Pokemon Legends Arceus has an 86 on Metacritic from 41 critic reviews, the vast majority being positive and 3 being mixed on the game. Overall, that's a pretty good score. For reference, Sword and Shield got a respectable 80. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl with 73, the original Diamond and Pearl averaging an 85, and so on. The games with higher scores than it at this moment are Black and White, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Sun and Moon, and X and Y. It's definitely very interesting to see because even those games offer many different things when you compare them to each other, so it might be a little hard to tell exactly where this game will fall for you. I mean, seriously? Pokemon Y is the highest rated Pokemon game of all time, and I feel there are a large number of people in the community that feel like that might not be a very accurate score. And this is where I'm coming in. I'm taking a look at reviews across all the varied scores to see what the main problems people have, as well as the main things they like. Being a generally optimistic person, I want to start off with the positives. Overall, it seems the catching, the exploration, and the crafting did in fact end up being some of the most fun the reviewers have had in the game. As of late, Pokemon has been known for being very linear. The progression of the story itself does appear to still be pretty linear, but progress isn't exactly straightforward. If you need to rank up, for example, there are many different ways to achieve that. The gameplay loop itself of just catching Pokemon seems like it would get boring after a while, but it doesn't seem to be the case for most of the critics. On the contrary, many of them love the new catching system, one describing it as feeling rewarding when they manage to catch certain Pokemon. There's still a lot of secrecy around the story, which of course there would be, but there doesn't really seem to be any negative connotations there when they do talk about it briefly. Also, there has to be a shout out to the seamless battle sequences. The ability to move around while battling, and more accurate Pokemon size scaling, in addition to the many variety of sizes that Pokemon can have. Apparently, some battles in this game will actually give you a real challenge, something that's also been appreciated by some, but maybe even tedious for others. In short, despite its flaws, this seems to be a step in the right direction at worst, and one of the best Pokemon experiences they've ever had at best. But now we have to be objective and talk about some of the bad stuff. While the game does look visually more appealing than when it first appeared last February, it's still pretty rough. In my opinion, there are some really gorgeous areas to be seen in the game but the fact can't be denied that there are some pretty rough areas as well. One reviewer actually gave the game an 8 instead of a 9 because of this factor. For me, that seems a little harsh, but if some of these areas truly are distracting in the way they describe, then I can understand that. If you play Nintendo games, especially Pokemon, you should kind of already expect them not to be technical masterpieces at this point. But Pokemon does seem to have this glaring weakness more often than not. And while Legends Arceus appears to have made strides in improving that graphical quality, it still manages to fall short due to pop-in, low-res textures, and the occasional frame rate drop here and there. But really, these are generally the only problems they have of these games. So if you can stomach some less than stellar graphics for the sake of a really fun Pokemon experience that invigorates the desire to play for those that have felt the series has gotten stale, then you need to go out and pick up a copy. But if technical capabilities are your major selling point, or you just simply aren't interested in a focus on capture over battling, then just hold that for the next one and hope it can meet your expectations. Well, that's going to do it for me today, folks. I hope this video was informative and helped you with your decision on whether or not it's worth your money. I've been nothing but excited to get my hands on this game, and I'm sure that I'm having an absolute blast playing it as you all watch this video. Be sure to stay tuned, as I've got some Legends Arceus content that you don't want to miss out on. Hey, hey, guys. Thank you for enjoying another Mystic Umbreon video. It's exciting times for the Pokemon franchise, and I look forward to the coming months where it just keeps getting better. If you guys are wanting some more bite-sized Mystic Umbreon content, please check out my TikTok, where I upload daily, as well as the Mystic Umbreon Shorts channel. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I think it's time to wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.